Welcome to a maintenance video on the GPD Micro PC. This time I'll be doing a tightening the screws on the inside hinge portion for the screen pivot on the Micro PC. Um, I did a video on the hinge in here, but obviously uh, there's a portion inside which has two screws that has also come loose for some people. Your hinge should be tight. If it does this, that is you've either got the screws up here or down here are loose. And if it's up here, it's easier. Uh, it's just a simple popping this cover off and then tightening the screws. But if it's down in here, you gotta gut the device. So let's get started. Um, first off, you have five screws total. Um, mine are already removed. I haven't had my screws for the bottom shell in for probably some four months. But, um, you need a, a screwdriver with a smaller uh, shaft like this compared to this. Uh, this will not reach in all the way for some of the screws. It'll kind of catch on the lip of the bottom of the shell. So you need a small shaft like this which will reach all the way in. And then once those five screws are out, since I don't have mine in to demonstrate, uh, you start from the rear, the top edge, work your, your, your fingernails around, and then kind of just press on the bottom and it should start popping like that. And then you just keep working your way around on each side and then just pop it off. So put this in a secure location. Another thing I'm also mentioning, I have my anti-static wrist strap in case I do something stupid. So to prevent it from shorting the entire device. So next, um, what may or may not be the hardest portion. Um, this entire uh, motherboard, the way it's positioned, um, this is kind of captured by this plastic tab here. So the, uh, the motherboard itself needs to rotate up and out. You can't just pull it straight out. And this battery, the battery is kind of overlap, so you have to remove the battery. I've not found any way to remove the motherboard without removing the battery. Now, that can be complicated depending upon the adhesive. For some people, they've had a lot of issues pulling, removing the battery. Um, it varies a lot. So let's get this screw out. You also need, this is a tiny, the battery screw is a tiny screw. You need someplace safe to keep yours. And pop the cover my and then this the batteries are offset so there's a little lip here which is what overlaps so you kind of work your way like this and as i said oh uh, some people might have more difficulty removing it than mine which will complicate matters if you do have a problem because you don't want to damage the battery so next we remove the ssd which is just a single screw I generally just leave the screw in place for that mount and just pull the SSD out and put that in a secure location. And then remove the heat sink. You have two screws in the fan and three screws in the heat sink mount itself. All five must come out. So we pull the two screws out of the fan. And then the three in the heat sink. Let's just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, the heat sink screws, at least one of them is a different length than the other, so make sure you keep track of where they're coming from. Let me see if I can... That's a long screw. I think it might be this one that's a short screw. Okay, this one's not fully out, so let's get this out. And yeah, okay, this one's a short screw in the bottom corner. That one's a tall screw, that's a short screw. Get this now we pull this straight up and then this oh oh this connector it's kind of got oh blades in it so you don't pull it out you just pull it straight up like this and it pops out so i just leave those screws inside there so you have two long screws and then a short screw so Next, uh, I'll disconnect the antenna mounts. You have these little tabs holding in place. Make sure you pull them out of that because those will tear if you don't do that. And then the other cable. Pull that out and out of the way. 
Um, you have this little elbow in this corner. Um, tweezers usually works to pull this out. Pull that up and out of the way. Now you have the LCD connector, which is not cooperating. There we go. And pull this out. You have this connector here, which I think is for the touchpad. I'm, or, I'm not sure. Now they have the serial port. Pull that out. And then here's the keyboard connector. So we got that, 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 and that. And that's everything. Let me get these graphite pads out of the way. So now we need to just uh, pull the motherboard out completely. Um, to start with, underneath this metal foam, there's a screw. Which, let's see if I can get closer so you can see it. Right underneath here, there's a screw. So rather than peeling the foam off, I just kind of just push it out of the way with the screwdriver. Get in on the screw and unscrew it. I just leave that screw in place. You can kind of see it's at an angle. It stays captured in there rather than pushing the foam out to pull the screw out. So let's get on onwards with the rest of the screws. We have this screw in the corner, screw number one. Screw right here, screw number two. And I should mention you can't leave the heat sink on because I think these two uh, go through to the underneath to the shell. You can't leave the, the heat sink in place. I wish you could. Uh, screw number three in this corner. Screw number four right here in the middle, on this edge. Screw number five, which is not tight. And then obviously you have screw six there, which I wasn't counting. And that's everything. So now you lift the motherboard up and out. So now we have the motherboard out. Make sure this switch stays lined up with the fan switch, otherwise you kind of have to take everything apart to fix that or press it one way or another. So here we flip this over. This is what I'm trying to get to, which let's see if you can show. You can see how the entire thing is wiggling on the screws. You can't get straight on it. I wish you could get to the screw without having to take the entire thing apart, but I've not found any angled screwdrivers at work. So you have this uh, this fingered uh, strip, which is ground uh, grounds on. It grounds on all of these. So you kind of there's two screws in this, and then I pull this or loosen this screw here because it's underneath the keyboard. So we'll loosen this, not take it out. Disconnect this screw, take out the screw. It's shorter than the others, so keep that separate. Take out the screw as well. And pull it out. Now we have that tab out. So this time I've tightened this before it came loose again, so excuse me as I go get some Loctite to make sure this never comes out again. Okay, I got my thread lock, which is, the green is a, penetrating type of thread lock for screws are already installed, but I'm not using it properly for this application since I'm applying it to the threads, but it's either a choice between that or red thread lock, which is um, high strength. You can kind of see it does have the uh, some sort of the blue uh, friction stuff, which didn't do anything. Tiny amount. I'll just dab it in the stuff that's on the lid. This will probably never come out again, which is perfectly fine by me. So get that in there. And you don't want to really crank crank down, but you also want to uh, make sure it's tight. Which I call that good. So 
other screw, which will be the same process. Excuse me. Dab that in the green. Put that in there and tighten it down. So you can see the hen, it moves a small amount, but oops, sorry about that. I don't know. But it's now tight. There's no real movement in it anymore, which is what I wanted. So that this stuff will take up 24 hours to cure, but it's not like it's going to move during that time period. And so now we get back to reassembly. First thing first, we get this, um, the grounding pad. There's only one way it can go, so you don't really have to worry about putting it in backwards, but you got to make sure the tabs are underneath the keyboard. Let me loosen this up a little since it's not going. You will have to peel this black stuff back a little, but it doesn't really affect the performance or anything. You got little lining tabs as well. So kind of just force that in and find the pins. Okay, we're now we got the pins in. So we get the two screws, the smaller screws. Get that up in there. Tighten it. And tighten it. Then you retighten this screw on the keyboard. And we get the keyboard back in place. Excuse me, the motherboard, not the keyboard. The keyboard's already kind of installed. I'm gonna flip this over. So once again, make sure this is lined up on the right side, which is currently the on position, and make sure all the uh, ribbon cables are out of the way as long along with the antennas so you put this in at an angle and set it down um, but don't go all the way yet because these will need to be pulled out you got this one out and now i need to find this one okay set the uh, uh, lcd cable in the proper position the slot and now it'll kind of just stay in place, but be a bit springy, which is normal. So we just work our way around and tighten them down. Once I find out what I do with my screwdriver. There it is. There's no real order you need to follow for putting these screws in. I just start from this side and work my way over. And I'm sorry about the phone notifications. Since this springs naturally on, up on that side, I won't I won't tighten them down yet. I'm just snugging them. So we got one screw. Screw number two. That's not going in properly. There we go. Screw number three in the corner. Screw number four, push this down with your finger to get the whole, uh, edge set down in place. And then snug that down. And then this one in the top corner on this side. And then we get to this one underneath the foam. I'll tighten this one down fully. Just kind of push it in place and tighten. And I'll just work my way around. Tight. 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 And tight. Okay, 
So kind of apply pressure with your finger to make sure it's seated all the way and then push the tab down. And that's done. So next we'll do this one, since it goes underneath the LCD cable, which, let's get this out of the way to show. You gotta line it up and apply pressure. push it in kind of I use my fingernail on the back of the plastic tab and then once again while applying pressure push the tab down so LCD connector line it up and convince it to go in you, the white sh line should be kind of flush with the connector if it's at an angle it needs to go in further Push it in, push it in, and click. Uh, keyboard is pretty simple. You just got to make sure it's lined up, which actually can be more complicated than I was hoping, and push it in. It should make a little clicking noise when it's fully in place. So antenna cables. I always start with putting this these in. I usually just try to line it up and just put it, uh, I kind of use something metal on top to click it in place. Make sure it's fully centered. And it should make a nice clicking noise. So then get these into the tabs. I usually just use my fingernail in the center. And then you have two over here. Click. Click. So now we'll connect this one. Get that lined up. Push it down, make sure it's down, and then you have one a retaining connector. Okay, so next, heatsink, which obviously most people use the paste. I'm just reusing these graphite pads just because I'm lazy and they kind of reuse pretty well. Get those lined up all in there. Make sure whatever, set it down straight on it. Make sure nothing moves. And then don't tighten down, but just get the screw started because it'll spring like that. Then get these two screws. I'll start with these two screws first in the fan. Then no need to completely crank down on these. These seem to be pretty, pretty good at holding pressure. Tight, tight. Tight. So we connect this fan connector 
which again it has those little blades so you don't you kind of go in straight and just press down on it and then it's installed and then bend the those over um let's get the ssd uh unscrew the screw on the mount for this and then just let that bend over and then retighten it and that's not in its mount and now it is Oops, that didn't happen so battery Kind of, it doesn't really matter where you put it as long as it's inside the slot. So I kind of just let it rest where it wants to rest. And then the battery, let that click in place and then put the screws in. I only have one screw, but everyone else should have two. So install the screw, these are tiny screws. For almost all these screws, I use a PH00 Phillips double zero. Um, I think for the battery screws, they are triple zero. So they're, they're tiny. And it can be a pain to get them started. But we got it in there. And voila. Then obviously you do the other screw at the same time, if you had it. So. Do double check, just quick look over, look see, make sure everything's all right. And then the battery, or excuse me, the back cover. I always start my way in the center here. Make sure that's kind of uh, uh, in place and then work your way around. And there we go. No more flopping. And sometimes when you disconnect the battery, it may take a couple times. And there we go. There you have it. It's booting up. Everything is good. And that's how you how we tighten those two screws. So that'll be it. Thank you for watching. Hope this might be of some help to you. Goodbye.